the knowing. Interior, hospital quarter, day. Cherie, a masculine presenting black woman, late 30s, in a naval uniform, stands in front of the door to a hospital room. She wears a face mask and gloves. A note hangs on the door with print too small for the viewer to read. Cherie takes a breath and caresses a silver cross and a silver chain around her neck. She knocks and enters. Take the damn thing off. Take it off. Super title, San Francisco, 1993. Interior, a front room in San Francisco, day. Adam, a white man in his late 30s, is sitting on a couch, opening a thick envelope. The envelope contains photographs and a handwritten note. I found these cleaning out his apartment. I couldn't look at them, so I'm sending them to you, maybe later, unquote. Adam takes out the photos and looks at the first. Special effects of a camera click, still a black family around a dinner table. They knew it was gonna be my last Thanksgiving. I couldn't ride 40 minutes on the Metro without a bathroom. And Poolsville is 20 miles from Rockville. Interior, one bedroom, one bed hospital room, day. Peter, a once handsome black man, 35, is lying in bed with the sheet pulled up to his neck. His head and face are of normal proportion, but you can tell that his body has wasted drastically. At six feet, Peter now weighs 110 pounds. Seated in chairs on either side of the bed are Cherie and Adam. My oldest brother lives in DC. When mama asked him to bring me, he claimed he didn't have room in the car. Did they know? <laughs> uh, they pretended not to. They never visited me in DC. I was a uh, I was a Christian abomination with the exception of my sister, Cece. None of them ever went to church with mama. Hypocrites asking me if I was dating any nice girls, even mama, but at least she loved me. I, I, I mean, did they know that you were sick? Special effects of camera clicks, still of Frank, Peter's father with his other family, his mistress and their two children. We don't talk about bad things in our family. We don't talk about anything in our family. I didn't know I had a half brother and half sister until I was 17. Dad was never around and mama was never gonna admit it. Do you think she knew? Yeah. Yeah, she knew. Cece told me that a friend of hers that worked in the hospital saw a birth certificate with Frank's name as the father. Oh, left his ass then and there. <laughs> and how is mama going to raise seven children? All I'm saying is at least he provided some of the money some of the time. Men are such dogs. A uniformed nurse enters the room. I can take that piece of dialogue. Mr. Anton, it's time for your meds. Oh, I'm here. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. I'm Mr. Anton, it's... It's time for your meds. I have to change your position and clean you up. And you have to eat. What for? It's all gonna end up in the same place anyway. Can you give us 20 minutes, please? Let me offer you some uh, Alpo in the uh, cafeteria. Interior, in front of the hospital chapel room, day. Adam waits, Cherie exits, her eyes moist. Adam envelops her in a hug. Thank you. Adam is embarrassed. He's not normally this demonstrative. Sorry. I, I know we've only just met. Don't, uh, don't apologize for being compassionate.
You don't usually see that on, on a uniform. It's a link to my family, to my upbringing. Some people think you're a Christian. It's good camouflage. It messes up the dyke image they already have of me. <laughs> you're not a Christian. I have my own kind of Christian. A congregation of one or two, if you if you count Peter. He never went to church when we were together. I guess he came back. So we met at Faith Temple. Oh yeah, I heard about that. Apparently he was the Reverend's favorite. Until Peter made it clear he wasn't gonna sleep with him. Cherie shrugs. Yeah, it was my way back to, you know, it's hard to worship at the altar of Jesus hates you. Reverend Tinney made it okay. I could enjoy the good parts again. The good parts? The singing, the joy, the knowing. Her face registers the difficulty of articulating what she feels. She delivers the next line with an ambiguous mockery. It's a black thing. You wouldn't understand. <laughs> Interior, a hospital waiting room. <clears throat> Excuse me. A, a hospital cafeteria day. Adam and Cherie sit on chairs across from one another. Cherie is sipping from a hot cup. Adam has a bowl of red jello in front of him. And the only time I eat jello is when I'm visiting a friend in the hospital. I love jello, but it's a cafeteria affair, you know, and uh, reminds me of my childhood before I knew about red dye number two. The plague doesn't take you out, this hospital food will. <laughs> Have you been eating a lot of jello? Sure, I've been living in San Francisco for the past five years. I have lost count the amount of friends that I've lost. Oh, it's good of you to come. I knew it would be the last time. <laughs> After Arturo died, I, I made it a call, a point to call every weekend. And he said, finally, you know, if you're gonna come visit me, you better come now or just don't come. <clears throat> it was awkward with the new job and no vacation time, but I went right in there to HR and I said that my ex-lover was dying. And that wouldn't have gotten me very far in Topeka, but they understood in San Francisco. Cherie raises an eyebrow. Wouldn't fly in the military either. And they'd bounce you out for even asking. Your superiors, they don't know about you? Not as long as I keep my mouth shut and pretend. Then they can pretend. It's just like home. When did he tell you? About eight months after Arturo died. I'd known what he'd gone through. So I, I dropped everything and I came out right away. Special effects of camera click, still of Peter and Adam out on the town. They're smiling, but the expressions are strained. Yeah, he still looked pretty good. I got him out of that overheated apartment. <laughs> it's cold all the time. <sighs> yeah. Looking to see the crying game. He loved it. I knew he would. 
special effects of camera clip, still of Michael in his prime. Oh, I'm sorry, still of Peter in his prime. He was a beautiful. He was a beautiful man, and uh, <sighs> he he brightened up every room that he entered. <sighs> Cherie reaches for Adam and takes his hand. I know. You know, the bitch of it is, is that if uh, we had stayed together, I would have gotten it. <sighs> but when the first guy started dying, you know, we'd, uh, we'd already broken up. So you're negative. I thought we, um, I thought we both were. It was so scary, you know, because we just didn't know what, what caused it. And as luck would have it, you know, I didn't bottom after Peter because he was a top and he just wasn't particularly gentle. And when did you find out? I've known for two years. Yeah, it was here that I found out. But how, how what was, what, sorry, how, how was that? Special effects of camera clicks, still of Cherie feeding Peter Halloween candy in his hospital bed. They're clowning around. Oh, Peter got really sick. And we thought it was pneumonia and he was here for it. A week. Interior, a one bed hospital room day. I don't know how they told him, but he was furious. <clears throat> we see the hospital sheet being thrown aside, feet striding across the floor, door opening, and hands tearing the warning sign from the door. Uh, he said that they hadn't asked him. Uh, is his permission to test and, and they were wrong and he was going to sue them for malpractice and then every time they put up one of those damn signs he'd get up and he would rip it down interior the hospital cafeteria day when was this around holly halloween um 89 Sure. Yeah, I remember bringing him some Halloween candy. <laughs> he was such a big kid. He loved those Abba Zabba bars. Special fix of camera clip, still of Peter and Arturo at a Christmas party. Arturo is clearly smitten. God. Shri, he met. He met Arturo at a Christmas party that year. So? He knew he had it. Arturo had recently come in from Cuba. I met him. They were very much in love. Peter told me that Arturo had never been with a man and he'd fallen in love with Peter and that was a big turn on for him. And So he knew. Yeah. He knew. He didn't tell me that Arturo was new to the life. Special effects of camera click, still of Arturo with the flat purple Kaposi sarcoma lesion peeking out of his upper arm from his short sleeve shirt. Well, of course he didn't tell you. Because that would have you would have put it all together. 
so now I understand. <laughs> oh, fuck. Arturo broke up with him when he started with the KS symptoms. True. Yeah. Peter must have been asymptomatic at that point. True. Arturo, you know, he come, he completely broke. He wouldn't communicate with Peter. He um, he moved so that Peter couldn't track him down. And I had never seen Peter that upset. That's when we started talking again. Special effects of camera clicks, still of Peter and Adam in a tender moment. Because then he had a shoulder to cry on. But he didn't tell me what was really going on. Just said that Arturo had flipped out when he was diagnosed. And I asked Peter if he'd been having safe sex because I was concerned about his status, you know, and I never, I'd never met Arturo. And oh God, he fucking lied to me. And he said, yes. Oh, uh, I didn't know about any of that. I just assumed that he told Arturo or that Arturo was positive himself. How, how quickly Arturo went down, like he was gone in six weeks. That was when he woke me up at 3 a.m. and he was sobbing and gasping. I felt terrible. Called me too. It still took him two months to tell me that he had AIDS. I asked Peter to give me his mother's phone number and he refused, you know? Didn't want her to know. That's fucking family. I had to support and organize his support system, okay, from an opposite coast. Well, you know. Peter was never very concerned about that sort of thing. Well, you're telling me, you know, he always just slid by in his charm and good looks. They sit in silence for a couple of beats. Sounds of the hospital and soft conversation fill the scene. Special effect of camera click still of Peter in his prime. We should go. <sighs> Shereen. He told me that Arturo had infected him. He knew he had it long before he even met Arturo. How could he do that? How, how, how can he do that? It's monstrous. Good Christians. Washed in the blood of the Lamb. What does that mean? I know Peter's family. I grew up in that family. If you have the misfortune of being born into a good Christian family, you live in a lie or you live in denial and you always live miserably. But Peter moved to DC to get away from all of that. He split his family in two. He didn't have he, he didn't stop having a family. He didn't stop lying to them. She distractedly fingers the cross. I do the same thing. That's the price of staying connected. I still don't I don't get what you're saying. Lies, hypocrisy, denial. We grow up with it. We swim in it. It enters our bones. And? It can carry over. A beat. His face registers horror. Carry over? 
And that justifies infecting his lover? It justifies nothing. I mean, he probably didn't even make the connection. He just lived his life. I thought I knew him. But he, he, does, runs. he doesn't know himself. I leave for San Francisco tomorrow. I may never see him again. So how can I face him? Cherie takes his hand once again from across the table. Adam, what is the point of doing this to yourself? Adam brings his fingers to his eyes and squeezes tears from the corner. It's not about me. I mean, I, I just, oh, I can't believe I fell in love with a man who would do that. It's done. He's dying. Yeah, well, maybe we should tell him. You know, give him a chance to, to fucking, I don't. To what? Confess? You could say it wasn't true or that he didn't know. Yeah, that's bullshit, Cherie. You're very sure of yourself. Adam buries his face in his hands. Special effects of camera clicks, still of Peter covering Adam's eyes at a table where a cake reads one year anniversary. Interior, a one bed hospital room, day. Shereen and Adam are seated in the chairs they occupied before. The remains of a half eaten meal are on the hospital tray at the side. Peter. Peter. Cherie and I, uh, we were figuring some stuff out in the cafeteria. Cherie. <laughs> Cherie, the bowl. She <laughs> grabs a bowl from the tree, puts her head, puts her hand behind Peter's back to lean him forward. He vomits a clear pink liquid into the bowl. Looks like Pepto-Bismol. When he's done, Cherie leans him back against the headboard. She made me eat. The tears stream freely down Peter's face. Why am I going through this? I didn't do anything to deserve this. This is so unfair. He gestures towards Adam. We were together when all of this started. How come it hasn't affected you? Maybe, maybe if you never would have left me. <laughs> you were already sleeping around, okay? And we didn't know about safe sex. Sharif dabs at his tears with a facial tissue. Maybe. Quiet. This isn't doing any good. We're your friends. We're here to help you. What? You think I wanted you to see me like this? Horrible. Sticks for arms and legs. Don't help. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. No, don't, no, don't, 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 don't be sorry. Maybe there is. Nothing to forgive. Forgiveness. Cherie shoots, shoots Adam a warning look. The struggle plays out in his eyes. You will live with this for the rest of your life. Adam begins crying in his turn. Peter. You knew you had it when you were with Arturo. You knew you had it. How could you do that? How could you do that? Tell me, how could you do that? I want to see wait, wait, wait. Peter shoots Adam a wild look. He then turns to Cherie, who comes to the bed and takes him in her arms. I want to see Reverend Timmy. Baby, I'll, I'll phone him now. I'll stay here. 
I'll be with him. No. No. I want you to go out. Peter, this could be the last time, so no, I'm staying. Oh, I don't care. I hope it is. I want you to go. I want you to go. With the second repetition of this line, the camera focuses on Peter's shock expression. Interior of front room in San Francisco, day. I want you to go. Adam is sitting alone in his front room. The envelope of the photos drops from his hands onto the coffee table. His eyes are troubled as he stares into the mid distance, fade to black. 